Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and present you guys with a more of an updated guide of the uh, Flame Reeve Spellblade that we're playing. It's kind of an updated video of the one I put out just the other day. I think tomorrow we'll also be putting out a first impressions video. Uh, also highly requested for you guys, so I have went and uploaded my character with a last epoch planner. Now do know that if you are going to follow this character, I've only been playing this character for like literally 15 maybe 20 hours i haven't really like min max anything i've really just been blasting so there's going to be a whole bunch of unoptimized stuff that you're going to see in here but for players who want to follow along, uh, along and have similar results that's pretty much what this is for right so with that being said i'm going to go ahead and run oops, i'm going to run a few uh maybe like two monoliths real fast and then we're going to talk about the entire character right uh, character is currently uh, deathless character found character found means that like uh, this character found all of their gear I didn't like use any other gear from any previous characters as it literally doesn't work, right? It's like poe, but each character in SSF has their own tabs So this is a 90 monolith. I just opened I haven't been here before so I'm gonna just go run in and uh, see how it goes So the the simple play style of pretty much how this works is a uh, you're pretty much just spamming one button, which is your Flame Reef. Uh, your enchant weapon should be going off automatically. Uh, you use your teleport defensively as it gives you nice armor boosts. Um, if you feel like you're gonna die, you can always press your Flame Ward for some bonus shield, but this also goes off automatically. And if you run out of MP, you can kind of choose what skill you wanna use. I'm messing around with Focus right now uh, because it gives me essentially huge armor while I'm channeling. So it's kind of helping me learn some boss mechanics uh, and not die in the process of it, basically, right? All right, let's get started. I think some of the bigger things I want to do now is on my helmet, I'm going to try to look for plus two enchant weapon. Uh, and I'm going to try to get CDR to get enchant weapon going pretty much 100% uptime. Uh, since enchant weapon is such a big part of the damage on this build. So some of the, from what I've seen so far of a few people who have been interested in playing this, one of the big concerns has been mana so far. Mana is like pretty demanding as this build literally is spamming Flame Reeve. So some of the best things I can tell you regarding MP is uh, try to get mana regen on literally every single stat you can. So I have 24 uh, flat mana regen per second right now. And uh, we'll go over the gear after, but like my ring, for example, has 35 mana regen. Uh, it's on a base that's also giving me mana regen. This other ring on the right has like 30% regen. Um, I don't know. My amulet has 36% regeneration. My uh, warding scroll has like 33% mana regen. So basically almost anywhere I can get it. And some of the newer stats, I say newer, they're not really new at all. But like, um, where is it? On um, sorcerer here. I'm going to be going into Mono Shell into Wisdom to get some additional Mono Regen as well. I don't need enough Mana to have it up, like, to be able to spam it permanently, because that's the whole point of, like, focus. But you definitely want enough Mana to feel like you can kind of just keep bursting, right? That's an important part. Oh, it takes less damage from distant enemies. I should have went closer. Int and damage over time. That's actually a sick base. It sucks that it has like no crafting potential. All right, so that one's done. Let me just go uh, run another map for you guys real fast. And we'll talk about the character. Ooh, cooldown recovery. That's gonna be important for the next setup. Let's just go down. I definitely need to uh, 
get some more ward generation as well. Well, not generation, sorry. I would like to get more wards uh, retention. That's it. Um, my ward generation is, is crazy when I'm spamming my flame ward. Uh, it's just ward retention I need more of. Uh, this character so far is not using any unique items, any legendaries. I'm not fully sure exactly what I want to use yet. I know there are some... I think there's a, either boots or a belt that can roll like... Um, uh, not roll, sorry, but has like... Uh, I think one of the stats that's like life gets converted to ward, but you lose life per second or something. So basically, it would just be like another buffer of ward, which would honestly be really good because I my health is never really used like ever I never have to use my HP or anything and then here's an example of me using my focus Okay, let's just pop out and go really into this loot. Wait. Just kidding, we're leaving. Still have to mess with the loot filter so we end up turning off like all, basically all yellow items, but uh, I haven't messed with it too much just yet to change all the affixes. Here's my, uh, here's my beautiful dump tab so we can keep making this video. I take all these items and throw them in the dump tab. It's beautiful. Okay, so let's get started on the character. I'm going to take literally all my gear off and just kind of explain what I did uh, regarding my gear, right? Kind of like how I went through them. So in terms of the skill tree and leveling, uh, let's just talk about leveling really fast. Leveling is, is really simple with this character. I'm going to be honest, in last epoch, you have so much flexibility. You should honestly level with whatever spell you want right you really should um when it comes to mage specifically i chose to level with um mana strike main reason is i wanted to kind of feel that like casterish feel not caster like that melee archetype as a caster and mana strike kind of really helped me understand if i would like it or not right um essentially you're scaling attack speed instead of scaling like uh, uh yeah you're scaling attack speed instead of spell um sorry cast speed um, and you're pivoting more to, like, your melee weapon versus using um, flat damage, like, uh, spell damage, right? So that's kind of why I decided to level with Mana Strike, but truly you can pick whatever skill you'd like. And even right now, I'm currently using Focus. You could be using Mana Strike as a generator instead of Focus, per se, right? So after that, once you have essentially become a Spellblade, you can kind of see the, the passives are allocated here. Um, I believe I started with Scholar, not Scholar, I started with Elementalist. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. I don't remember, actually. I think I started with Elementalist and or Scholar. Actually, I believe it was Scholar because of the, the flat MP for your Mana Strike, but it's not really a big deal. Um, this is currently, like, what I have. Uh, Mage Flurry is pretty nice because of the TD, uh, CDR on your Teleport, but also the Attack and Cast Speed. I think Cast Speed governs how fast your Teleport goes. Attack Speed governs, like, everything else regarding Spellblade, basically, with Melee. Uh, Reactive Ward is nice. Warden is very good for the 50% Ward Retention. And then I'm eventually going to go into Sun and Storm into Silver Rune. Then Spellblade itself, um, you can kind of see the passives I have here. Um, the main thing to understand is these big passives for like Infused Weapon and Prismatic Blade are not super beneficial until you have taken Rolling Thunder on Flame Reef. Other than that, this is pretty much the tree here. Uh, a big part of it is stacking Int. And then currently there is a bug with um, Calculated Destruction where it's also giving melee crit chance. So I have it. I probably shouldn't have it, but you know, why not, right? I have it. Uh, these points are supposed to go into Mono Shell and then into Wisdom. Anyway, enough about the passive tree. You guys have the PoE Planner. Or not the PoE Planner, sorry, the last Epoch Planner. So you could go through with that. Let me explain a little bit of itemization with the build. Now, I do believe I can attach my loot filter to the last Epoch Build Planner. It's not amazing, and it's just designed for, like, entry level of early game, or of, like, late game. So, basically, kind of like your second tier monoliths. Um, because a lot of this gear, like, for example, the Crystal Swords, 
do not drop in the first tier of monoliths. So, speaking of crystal swords, here's my first one. Crystal sword, uh, the main benefit of them is their their implicits are disgusting. So, for example, it rolls up to 100% melee elemental with attack speed, right? So I have crafted attack speed, crit, and then the suffixes on this are are literally useless. I don't think chill really does anything for me. Uh, I think my ideal suffixes would be like armor shred, and I'm not sure the other one. Um, so that's crystal sword number one, and this is crystal sword number two. Um, you can see both of mine have crit on them. You don't have to go crit to start. Crit is like a little bit later. This one, for example, has crit, flat fire damage, and then chance to shred armor, uh, and then poison. My body armor, um, may, the base of this one, which is the Volker Regalia, is huge. You get ward retention, and you also, not only do you get ward retention, I need to actually divine this, I think, but you get mana spent as, uh, gained as ward, which is fantastic with this build because we just shoot out these flame reeves so fast. Big thing about this, though, is because of the way, like, the exalted affixes work, getting a tier 6 flame reeve is plus 3, and getting a tier 7 flame reeve is plus 4. And getting extra uh, passives for your main skill is massive. So I will have to recraft myself a new body armor at some point. Okay, ring number one is uh, garbage. The only reason I'm using it is because of the movement speed. I think I would prefer running Scholar. Um, I think Opal is another one, which is cooldown reduction and all attributes. That's probably better than this even. This is quality of life. But moving on to this. I currently have Mono Region and Intelligence. I don't know if you can get Crit Multi as a prefix on rings. I haven't checked. Crit Multi would probably replace Mono Region, but I would have to fix my... I would have to fix Mana Sustain at that point, right? So for right now, I'm sticking with Mana. Uh, this one also, Int, Mana, and then pretty much just Res with Crit Avoidance. My Boots. Uh, my Boots are one of my weakest pieces. It just has Int and Movement Speed, and for the most part, that's basically it. The base is nice because it gives Ward Retention. Um, definitely would try to pivot into Cooldown Recovery on my Boots, um, and as that last suffix, maybe Crit Avoidance? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. My Gloves, uh, we have Int and Mana. You can get Attack Speed on Gloves, uh, which is what I wanted to get ideally, but again, it's all about balancing your MP consumption. If the build feels bad because you go oom too quickly, it's not as enjoyable to play, right? So this is currently what we have is just Int and Mana with like Frailty and uh, plus Physical Resistance. I'm thinking if I can like, if you look at my body armor here, I have a sealed affix of Mana. If I can seal more affixes of Mana, I can completely remove the Mana stat and gain prefixes back, but I'm not sure if that's really what I want to be sealing compared to other stats like plus skills. Um, so I'm currently running this little scroll, which is basically giving flat mana and mana spent gained as ward. I've got crit multi, mana regeneration, all res, lightning res. Uh, my helmet, which is one that I said I, I do want to replace. You can get, um, I believe it is called enchant weapon on your helmet, which also rolls with melee elemental damage. You can also get cooldown recovery on a helmet, which would be really nice for uptime on your enchant weapon. So let's put that over there. Uh, this belt. This belt is also pretty poo-poo. Uh, it's got mana regen, a bricked prefix, uh, which is that light. It's not bricked, but it's not very beneficial. It's got Eli res, and then it's got fizz res. I think you can get cooldown reduction on belt, and this is something I would like to get. And then my amulet is currently uh, a fizz res necrotic res base with... Crit Multi, Mono Region, LA Res, and Void Res. That being said, we are overcapped on a lot of our resistances, especially our physical. Uh, my idols are kind of all over the place. The main thing to know is that these large idols like this can roll pretty high melee elemental damage, which is pretty nice. And then I believe over here in my little idol tab, um, there are these smaller ones and these smaller idols uh, which you can see they're like just a little bit smaller so they'll fit here they can actually roll some pretty cool stuff like uh let's see if i can figure out what they were so you have like mana spent gained as ward you have fire damage doubled if you have over like 300 max mana which we will have of course we don't want just fire we don't want just lightning we want elemental damage there was uh something on here where where was it that i Maybe, maybe not. I thought there was a stat on here, but I could totally be wrong. But you guys get the idea, right? Melee elemental damage is huge. 
And this one even has like armor and mana. Honestly, percent armor, percent mana is an awesome affix on these as well. The rest of them are pretty much just helping me cap res, right? All right, with that being said, um, let's go ahead and talk about the skills. So, Flame Ward. Um, in the early game, basically your main source of survivability, you click Flame Ward, you get a massive bubble of effective life known as your ward. Uh, currently, the way I have it spec is pretty much for the big fire damage. So if you look at my flame reef, when I activate it, it gives me like, I don't know, 40k DPS, which is pretty nice. Um, getting cooldown reduction will help keep this up even like higher uptime. So CDR is very good for my flame ward. Uh, I have like essentially infusion here for the 250% fire damage. Um, I have ward per second on here. Not sure if I really need this. Um, along with the ward retention, which is really nice. Uh, along with prismatic buffer for reduced Ellie damage taken. Um, and then basically some ward into dual Aegis for extra charge. Um, and then cast flame ward when stunned. I went this way first. My enchant weapon. Uh, enchant weapon, basically I made it go automatically. I took desperation because of... Uh, you get 2% elemental damage per 1% missing mana. And when I'm bossing, I am really fucking spamming this skill, right? So I'm not sure how worth it it is, but if it procs anywhere at like medium MP, it's totally worth it. Uh, if I get a plus level of enchant weapon, I think I'm taking frozen sparks since my weapons have a combined total of 80 physical. I don't know if it takes both of them or not, but that's what I'm pretty curious about. The 50% attack speed is one of the main reasons I want to have enchant weapon up 100% of the time. This is so much attack speed. Uh, molten steel, big percent melee fire along with big melee fire damage. Flame Reeve. I don't know why this skill... Oh, I took off my body armor. That's why it's fucked up. Never mind. Uh, yeah. Okay, here we go. So, Flame Reeve, uh, the first thing I did is I took Dancing Flames right here into Rhythm of Fire. Rhythm of Fire is bugged right now, and you don't ever get stacks. You don't ever get the width bonus. You don't ever get the range bonus, but you do get the damage bonus. So, when this gets patched, we'll do quite a bit less damage. Um... Then after that, I went into Frenzied Flame, into Rolling Thunder, because it looks cool. Then, <clears throat> after Rolling Thunder, if you're having mana issues, do not go to Flame Caller. Instead, start filling out other nodes in the tree. I don't think uh, this node is worth it until you're actually dual-wielding swords. Um, so another option you can take until you have your Crystal Swords is coming down to like Slash and Burn into Scorching Tide. Um, once I got a lot of mana region affixes, that's when I made the swap to... Arcane Severance into Ember Infusion into Flame Caller, which returns the flame to us. So basically, if a target is like right here, it's essentially getting double hit. Uh, and that helps a lot with the burst window, right? The burst window being when you're doing like the bigger bosses who you don't get 100% uptime, you basically would like teleport, enchant, weapon, flame barrier, hold down, right click. Um, and then essentially you would like teleport into focus, get your MP back. You're pretty tanky while this is up and then rinse and repeat. You never really need to do this when you're just like clearing the monoliths. Uh, teleport, so teleport, a lot of different ways to build it. At the moment, I have like double stat duration. I have big armor and cold res. Um, I have ward gain, which I don't like this, but this opens up like health gained as ward. So when I teleport, you can see I actually gain quite a bit of ward on a teleport. Um, I would also like to take this because I have a lot of int. Uh, we've got Ward Retention, which helps keep the Ward going after the Teleport. And I think that's actually all the points there. Okay, Focus. So Focus, I went straight into Mana Regen. I also went to Mana Regen per missing Mana, because the whole point of this is to use when you're on low MP. Uh, then I went into Ward from Burst, along with the Energy Infusion, which basically, when you're bossing, can give you 10 second uptime of haste, which is very nice. Um... This basically just gives extra ward per second. Ward retention is really good. I don't actually know if I need mind shield. This is, I think, not really very beneficial. But again, your last, like, focus them itself could be replaced with many different skills, right? This is kind of just my choice. This is helping me learn the boss mechanics because, you know, first time doing bosses in Last Epoch, if you don't know what they're doing, you can always just hold down your focus and there's a good chance you can, at least in the content I'm running, you can face tank it with that focus button down. So that has been super, super beneficial. Other than that, you know, uh, the loot filter will be attached on the builder. 
We talked about the gear. We talked about the uh, passives. We talked about the skills themselves. We talked about the play style of the class. So I want to say that summarizes pretty much everything. Uh, I do have blessings. I don't know really um, what my blessings even honestly do. <laughs> so, uh, oh, here they are, active blessings. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can look at all this in the in the the builder, right? So I don't really have to go over this, but that's pretty much about it. So I'm gonna get to gaming. I can't wait to play some more Last Epoch. So I'm gonna catch you guys all later. Thanks so much for watching. Sorry if the guide was a little bit too comprehensive. The game has a lot of depth in it. Let me know if you liked the video down below. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna hop out. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can also catch me streaming live at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all later, and thanks for watching.